for the most part, you have to sit through all these trailers. So it's not like you can run away. You can't close your eyes. I mean, I guess you could, but then you'd look stupid in the theater, like sitting like this. It's 2021, movie theaters are back, blockbuster movies are back, but there's one problem. The trailers are showing way too much. My theory is that they're doing this because they may not be confident in the movies they're putting out. And so they have to really try and sell people, not people like me who will go see a movie regardless, more of the casual viewers who take a little more convincing, especially in a pandemic. That's the big thing here is that because of the pandemic, people aren't as likely to go to theaters for every single movie they wanna see. They may just wait for it to come out on streaming. But because of that, they wanna try and push even harder for people to come out and see their movies in theaters. So what they'll do is put all this spoilery stuff in there to really hook people. But for people like me, it's super annoying because I wanna go into a movie fresh, not knowing a lot. I mean, you can give me some bits and pieces here and there, but I like going into a movie and being surprised. But it feels like you can't really get that anymore because there's so many movies that just give you everything in the trailers. So I wanted to highlight a few trailers that I thought stood out to me and that were super spoiler and pretty much gave away the whole movie. And also some that did do that, that I think were really successful. First one, Black Widow. Now, in terms of plot and stuff, I don't think they gave away that much. But in terms of the big action set pieces, I feel like you see most of them in the trailer. Marvel Studios in general, I would say, has gotten better at making trailers. Age of Ultron was a trailer that I think showed way too much, especially the second one. I think actually all of the movies on this list, the first trailers were pretty good. And I think they were a good job of selling you on the movie without giving you too much. But then the second and the trailers after that is where it really started to delve into spoilery stuff that kind of ruined the movie. But in the case of Marvel, after Age of Ultron, things are kind of rocky. But Endgame, I think, was the most recent example where they didn't show anything. Like, the whole plot of the movie was completely under wraps. All the big surprises were not given away in the trailers. So you really were absolutely blown away by the things that were happening in the movie. But they were still able to make it successful too. It still made a lot of money. But then in the case of Black Widow, of course, it's been delayed so many times. So they had to put so much more effort into trying to get people in the theater to see it. So of course, they put all the big spectacle action scenes in the trailers, which didn't totally ruin the movie for me. But for the majority of them, I was like, oh yeah, that's a cool scene. I mean, I saw it in the trailer, but hey, it's cool seeing it on the big screen, whatever. Now this next one is a big offender of this because I feel like I knew exactly where this movie was going as soon as I went into the theater. Candyman, the newest one, 2021. That trailer, the first trailer I would say actually, was pretty good, it added an element of mystery to it. It got you hyped for it. But the second trailer basically gave you the whole rundown of the movie. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I predicted the end pretty much. There was like one element of the ending that I didn't see coming, but the majority of it, I'm like, yeah, I see where this is going. Okay, I'm not that surprised. If you are a fan of the Candyman movies growing up, then I think you're already on board to see this new one. Again, they have to try and sell new people, casual viewers, but I think you can give audiences more credit. I think they are more willing to go out and see certain movies, especially with certain creators. It was directed by Nia DaCosta, but Produced by Jordan Peele. His name, I think, is enough to get people in theaters. So I didn't think it was necessary for them to show so much of the movie in the trailers. Again, I knew pretty much what was going to happen as soon as I got in the theaters, and I wish it didn't happen that way. All right, now this last movie technically hasn't come out yet, but the second trailer did kind of grind my gears because it did feel like it was giving away the big plots of the movie, which is Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. I'm a big fan of Edgar Wright. I love his movies. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is my favorite. I was excited to see him go into horror, which is a different genre. Jordan Peele did the same thing, going from comedy to horror, and it paid off really well. So I was really excited to see what was gonna happen here. The first trailer I thought was great. It gave you a good idea of the tone, the vibe, the kind of scares you're gonna get. It gave you all of the actors that are gonna be in it, you know. It gave you a general sense of what the movie was gonna be without telling you the plot or anything like that. And then here comes the second trailer, which pretty much gives you a rundown of the whole movie. Again, I don't know how much of this is gonna actually be in the movie or how much of this is important to the movie, but as of right now, I'm very disappointed that the second trailer gave so much away. The whole plot essentially about this whole murder mystery thing and that this one guy seems to be guilty. I hope it's a misdirect, I really do, but as of right now, I'm really disappointed that this movie trailer, the second one specifically, showed so much. Again, you can give audiences more credit. It will be harder to sell people on an original movie, original horror movie, of course. The Night House, for example, didn't do that well in theaters, but I will get to that one because I think it's a good example of a trailer. But overall, I really feel like we should move away from these super spoily trailers. One last one I wanna highlight is Old. This one I thought was weird because Again, it's M. Night Shyamalan, it's a well-known name, right? 
it has a cool premise. The, you know, these people are on this beach turning old. But what was weird is that when you watch the movie, you can tell that certain moments were set up to be surprises in the movie. Like, for example, when Nat Wolf's character ages up, right? That was supposed to be kind of a surprise. And then you see that the girl's pregnant. Spoiler alert, by the way, sorry. <laughs> um, but I think then it's weird because you see that stuff in the trailer. So it's not really a surprise when you're seeing it in the theater, right? So why do they set it up that way? I mean, again, I think they're trying to sell people on the movie, the casual viewers especially, but still in this case, it's like, why would you go through all that? Why would you put so many surprises in the actual trailer so that there's no surprise in the movie? I think this also affects me more than most people because I go to the movie theater so often, I can't actually escape the trailers. That's a big thing. When you go to movie theaters, you can't just skip through them like ads on YouTube. You have to sit there and watch all of them unless you time it perfectly where you get in the theater right as the movie is starting. But for the most part, you have to sit through all these trailers. So it's not like you can run away. You can't close your eyes. I mean, I guess you could, but then you'd look stupid in the theater, like sitting like this for like, I think it's 20 minutes now that trailers are. Like you just look dumb doing that. So why would you go through all that? It kind of sucks. You're kind of held captive watching these trailers. Now the average person, this is easier because they don't go to the theaters as often. They probably only see trailers on social media, YouTube. And again, you could just skip them. You could scroll past them and it's no big deal. But when you go to movie theaters a lot, you're seeing all these trailers because that's what they're showing. So I was really disappointed when I had sit through spoily trailers for Candyman and Last Night in Soho. But I am hoping that Last Night in Soho is not as spoiler as I think it is. Again, I can't know for sure because I have not seen the movie. And now there are some better examples from this year of movies that had decent trailers that didn't show too much. The first one is Free Guy. I will put an asterisk on this one because there's one thing they did show in the trailers, which I wish they didn't, but I will give them credit because they hid away the most important part of the story that you won't see in the trailers. You only see it once you actually get into the movie, which I really applaud them on. That's what I think really sold me on that movie. But the one thing that I think they could have kept out is that alternate version of Ryan Reynolds' character, which I think was, dude, I forgot his name. I think it's dude. The big bulky version of Ryan Reynolds. I wish that was not in the trailers. That would have been a hilarious surprise. The moment where he's introduced is still really cool. And then there's a surprise within that, which is also kept out of the trailers, but it would have still been nice to have the surprise. But I would say generally speaking, the Free Guy trailers did a great job of showing you everything about the movie without showing you everything in the movie. I think it gives you a good idea of what the tone is, the kind of action you're gonna see, the video game elements, and all the cool actors that are showing up here and there. But again, I think this is one of the better trailers of the year. And then secondly, there's The Night House, which I had mentioned earlier in the video. Again, this is a great trailer because it didn't give you that much of the plot. You get a very general sense of it, but you really don't know what's going on, which is great. So you go into this movie trying to figure out this mystery. It gives you an introduction a little bit to the sort of scares, but it doesn't give away some of the biggest jump scares of the movie, which is great. Now, unfortunately, this movie didn't do well in theaters. And again, that kind of speaks to what I was talking about is like maybe by giving out these spoiler trailers, they're kind of hooking more casual viewers in. But then there's also the pandemic factor. Maybe some people saw the trailer for this and were like, yeah, I want to see that, but I don't necessarily want to go see that in a theater. I think I'll just wait for it to be on rental or streaming. That also could be a part of it, but I still think that studios need to start taking risks again and doing movie trailers that don't show every element of the movie. Again, it's a risk, but I think it's worth it because it enhances the viewing experience of the people who are actually going to see your movie. I think that's worth more than trying to give away all of your movie because you're afraid it's not going to be enough to hook people. And my last example of good movie marketing, a good trailer is Malignant. This is actually the wild card on the list because this one threw everybody off. The trailer is actually a huge misdirect on the tone of the movie. You think it's a standard James Wan horror movie, but really it's like a horror comedy. It's a satire in a way of the movie genre of old cheesy horror movies. But you don't get that in the trailer. You think it's just a regular horror movie. So then that's probably why a lot of audiences may have been disappointed because it's not what the trailers were saying. A lot of audiences going in are surprised because they think they're getting one thing, but they're really getting something else, which in a way does make it more enjoyable because you don't know what's gonna happen. You're surprised by it. There's a huge twist at the end of the movie that's not given away, not even hinted at in the trailers at all, which again, I think truly enhances the viewing experience. So if you are a Hollywood person watching this video, I'd be surprised if you are, but if you are, please stop giving away so much of your movie in the trailers. I promise you people still go see it. If you sell them on the tone, if you sell them on the actors, the directors, all the scares, if it's a horror movie, the action, if it's an action movie, but don't give away all the big action scenes. Like, I think you can get away with it. I think you can give people more credit. People do want to go see movies, of course, 
It's gonna be harder again because of the pandemic, but I really think it pays off better to not show so much in the movie trailers. So please stop putting spoilers in movie trailers. So what do you think? Do you think 2021 movie trailers are showing too much? Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos about movies. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.